Time for the big reveal. Let me know if I got your wedding ready or if I ruined the whole weekend. Pew! Oh my gosh. <laughs> Speak now or forever hold your peace. That's what they're gonna be saying. Hey, what's up, beautiful people? It's Big Chris here at the Beard Brand Barbershop in Austin, Texas, the one and only. And I definitely wanna say thanks to everyone who's been booking out, driving in from out of town, flying from different parts of the country to come see us. It's like my buddy JT. He's coming in from uh, St. Louis for a wedding. We're gonna get him fixed up. He's got a pretty good story to tell as well. So you were telling me a couple ideas you were thinking about, man? Uh, yeah, so... What are, you, what are you feeling? It's normally I do a, a little bit of a temple fade okay. and keep a little bit of texture on top. I still like to comb it over a bit, but I figured, hey, why not shake things up a bit? Maybe do a like a nice clean cut buzz. Okay. I've never done something like that with a beard this length before. Okay. Um, I've also never grown my beard out this long before. And so... Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was a unique <laughs> story. <laughs> so you sent me a message and one of the medications they gave you was minoxidil. Am I saying that right way? Am I saying that properly? Yes, sir. Uh, so um, that is a which actually makes your hair grow. It does. Uh, so if, yeah. it's a multifunctional uh, medication. <laughs> so it is one of the main ingredients topically for for Rogaine. Uh, that's right. That's right. I was on uh, dialysis at, with kidney failure, and they uh, prescribed that as a way to manage blood pressure. Interesting, man. And so I was about 20 years old and couldn't grow a beard at all. And whenever the nurse talked to me about uh, the side effect of the medication, I said, "Sign me up. No questions <laughs> asked." Because you, know, you know, I had friends and family that had beards, and uh, it was always something that I struggled with. And so. Um, I'm not struggling now, man. No, sir. It is here. <laughs> but you know, it's uh, you know, I I grow it every once in a while to uh, you know to remind myself, you know what I've been through kind of as a, a reminder of just the gratitude that I have. Yeah, and man. What, what do you think you want to do with it, man? Um, you need to bring it in a little like this? Yes, sir. Do you want to keep it growing this way? Yeah, let's keep it growing a little bit out of the, the chin, uh, tighten yeah. up on the sides just to um, kind of get it sharpened. I know I have a little bit of stray hairs for on sure. the side. Get an idea for the fade. How about for the, the top? What do you, are you saying you want to buzz this down to up here? Or do we want to keep some of the length? Um, was that just one of the ideas you had? Yeah, so I was, I drove from St. Louis and I had a long time to really think and consider, <laughs> okay, what am I going to do? I know I want to do a, a temple skin fade. I don't know how much longer I have left with this uh, head full of hair. Mm -hmm. So it's either do I just embrace going a little bit shorter on top with it or kind of maintain a little bit of the... Uh, the clean cut comb over uh, with a little bit of texture. Right. So I'll, I'll leave this up to you. I, I trust you, I've seen some of your work. I'm thinking quarter inch, in, in between a quarter inch and a half an inch off up here, nothing too, too crazy. I mean, the clipper work on the side is gonna be it's what blowing people's minds away. <laughs> and then I'm just, I just wanna make sure that this is doing what it's supposed to do uh, once it's all said and done. How do you feel about hard part on this side over here? Let's go for it. Let's do it? Yes, sir. All right. So since we're doing hard part, I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in first when we get that out of the way. So where's the wedding gonna be at, man? Um, it's Villa Antonia, I believe is the name of the venue. And it looks like a, a nice little area um, with a great scenery. And I've never been down to Austin, so this will be fun. So this is my uh, number three guard that I've got, and I'm just, this is gonna be my initial length to fade into. I'm just kind of taking this straight up and we'll build the contrast out from here. So holy shit, JT, man. 20 years old on a dialysis machine. I don't think there's many people <laughs> would even think that that's, that that's a thing, man. No, and um, that was the toughest part was not having a, a network or friends or family or anybody who I could have um, reached out to and asked about the process. And at 20 years old, that's not really on anybody's mind. And so there was a lot of isolation, not only uh, physically with being on the chair, but you know, mentally seeing my friends and um, kids I grew up with graduating and getting married and going to college. It was really tough. I was on it for two years, four months, and 13 days. Yikes, man. Yeah, and 
when you're when you're sitting on a chair alone, you it can just really sounds terrifying. And it was it was one of the most taxing mental experiences of my life. And um, you know, I, I calculated out it was equivalent of 61 entire days. It got to the point uh, where I was in school part time, working part time, and on dialysis. And uh, you know, I considered, you know, I thought that taking my life was easier than the process that I was going through. And, yeah, man. But I, I just had this voice that uh, said, you know, I'm supposed to be here. And eventually, I had a, uh, a friend that I went to high school with reach out to me. I needed a transplant. And uh, so this is a girl who, you know, haven't talked to in, in three years. She reached out, lived out in Washington, so I thought, why not? And uh, little did I know that she was doing all this research, you know, behind the scenes uh, for about a year and a half prior to her even reaching out to me. And uh, so I sent them the information, and the the testing went a lot quicker and a lot smoother than than anticipated. Because of that, I was able to go back to school and uh, go to college and finish my degree. Yeah, man. At the University of Missouri and. You know, because of that one decision, I've had this opportunity to uh, to work with other transplant patients, um, work with some legislation, and just being a uh, just a good representative of uh, of the community. So with this temple fading, and I've got my number one guard, and I've got it all the way open, sort of running it here into the number three. And then next, what I'll do is I'll close it and try to like just get rid of some of the weight I'm seeing here. Hopefully that's picking up on camera. And then right behind the ear too. I see some people will leave this area bald and then but leave this super dark right in through here and even through behind the ear. We're actually gonna go down to like a half, maybe even a little bit shorter there. And that way the haircut just grows back a lot better, I feel like. You still get the contrast from the bald to the dark. Just looks a little more intentional. All right, so this is all number three, and this is my uh, number two detachable. And I love using the metal blades because you get like more of a consistent cut. So we'll just start, just start blending into that three. The full two years was that the amount of time you were waiting? Is that is that what that was? Correct. So it could have been longer uh, okay. if uh, if my donor didn't reach out and. You know, be a living donor, um, but you know, with when on dialysis, there's so much uncertainty, there's so much just fear and anxiety that you know I didn't want to live that way, and so I just kind of I had this phrase, you know, brighter days are ahead, that I would you know say to myself and tell other people. There you go, man. You know, because it's not going to be you know on a schedule where things improve. It's you know, in the future, just having hope. And so it's like, it's not brighter days, or next Tuesday, or next month, it's just ahead. And that kind of, again, guarded optimism, I continue today. You know, it's been a little over a year, and I'm still here. So, you know, just following the directions, listening to my doctors, and doing the right thing on a daily basis. You know, there's no shortcuts. It's super cool that you're here sharing this story, man. Um... Hopefully someone's watching this and they're, they're picking up on some of this positive stuff. So JT's hair gets a little, a little wily in the corners here. So instead of just uh, edging him up and having a taper that comes straight up, today we're gonna kind of round the taper out a little bit to buy him some time on all this, all this wild hair right here. So the first blade I was running was a triple lot, which is pretty much like long stubble. And then this is my trimmer I'm coming behind with. So right now I'm cutting it so we can retain as much volume as possible. And there is a world where I pull the hair this way to blend it in more what's going on with the side here, but we're not doing it. We're not gonna do that, this go around. Okay. Shooting for max volume here, man. Going rogue? <laughs> you know, I think it's fun to experience different styles because, you know, each person's gonna have a different way and approach to it. And you know, I can say, okay, well, this is what I have, but you know, you're gonna give the the crisp version of it. Too. 
All right, oh. and the move I'm trying to do is longer to shorter. Uh, most people, or I want to say some people, before I start saying things, are going to call me out in the comments. <laughs> His hair kind of grows a little bit in this direction, so I don't want to leave it long, long, long here in the front when it grows out. I might start doing that on him. So we're going to shorten it up just a little bit in the front here. Literally cutting off maybe a week. I need to learn a technical term for this shit. <laughs> Just when the hair grows, you know, further down the forehead. Oh yeah. I don't know uh, what that is. I call that uh, the man, the manscape. There it is. Manscaping right here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Thanks, Bob. Oh, you mean the fringe? The fringe. Thanks, bud. The fringe area. The fringe. Yeah, that's a highly technical <laughs> hair term. Yeah. <laughs> HowToBarber.com. Jeez. We're gonna, going from longer to shorter this way too, uh, and that's that's cross functional. I guess uh, if we cut it like, so if we cut the hair like this, the hair would just want to fall this way, and that way only, pretty much. And I'm going with a one and a half blade instead of a triple eyed or a number one detachable, and that's so the, it cuts with texture, and um, it's going to let me leave a little bit a little bit more weight here versus going super duper duper tight on the transition. I'm just looking a little share of a comb to try to blend in. And I'm really trying to keep the still blade, try to keep it coming right on the spine of this comb right before the, the hair starts to pop out the bottom. And then just keeping the still blade as still as I can. I can get the type of texture I want. And I like to do it after I blow dry the hair too. That way I can see exactly what the weight's doing. See what we can do with this beard, man. So I'm gonna start with my number two. Just like this is an old trick I learned from the hash, man. Kind of just come down on the structure of the face. Might have seen Eric doing this in a video too. He was working on trimming his own beard at home. Mm -hmm. Just come off that structure right there. And then we're gonna fade the top part of this beard. So I'll be focusing the fade sort of like in this area here. Another trick I learned from the hash. And just, just a little bit of a one and a half too. Yeah, that looks pretty smooth. Now I've got a triple eye blade on here and I'm just gonna start shaping this bad boy. We're cutting it with the direction of the beard grows so I can uh, maintain as much length as possible. Yeah, at my job, they actually have me, uh, every Thursday we have a, uh, a meeting and they have me doing like the, the corny jokes. You know, it's uh, interesting about that movie, you know, it's called Goodfellas, but there's nothing good about those fellas. <laughs> and that's it, that's all I have. <laughs> I don't want to have any kind of reputation. <laughs> this is actually my first professional uh, beard trim. Normally I do it myself. I'm sort of just pulling a flipper forward here. Let's maintain the length here, but I definitely want to shorten this stuff up too, so I'll come back and start combing this down. And start cutting into the growth instead of with the growth because I want this to be shorter. Put all this stuff in the corner here. I'm a very big fan of Temple Smoke. Temple Smoke? If you have it, that's fine. That is my new favorite, man. Okay. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna run to the wall so I can get some for you to take with you. Oh, thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, brother. I think it's a current shop favorite right now. Yeah, Temple Smoke. Oh my God, I just wanna drink it. Some sea salt spray for JT. Um, I want them to smell really good for the wedding day, so I'm gonna grab some deodorant. And I'm gonna sneak them some beard oil too. Man, this guy's got a great attitude. I'm gonna get him a brush to take home too. For your brain travel brush. Yeah, I got some goodies for you, bro. Oh, jeez. I'm gonna load you up, man. 
this stuff, this deodorant we just dropped, it's so f***ing good, man. Just like, just one on there, you, you don't need to load it up, just, just one, one. you're good to go. All right, so there's tiny little uh, clay granules in here. Okay. Just make sure you shake this up real good before you apply. It's unexpected, but very much <laughs> got you, man. So I said four, but I had to get it started, so that's like six. So six, okay. And then when you're putting this in your hair, you're working it all the way down to the root. Nice hot towel for you. And if this is too much, just let me know, brother. No, it's all good. I snagged some of the, uh, the utility bomb for black sales. Oh, you got in on that? I did. Nice, man. So, I like it. I really do. Yeah, what I like most, most about it is the, the release of the, the notes. So once you put it on, you know, at first you have that initial uh, scent, and then it, you know, as it wears a little bit more, oh, man. it kind of really balances out and uh, fades slowly as well. And, it, and this is just a little bit of a cleanup underneath here, man. I don't want to take away too much. The more neck beard you shave away, the more less dense the beard becomes overall. And I feel like a lot of people, their first mistake is to just start attacking the beard and knocking this hair out. Because if you do decide you want one of those nice beards that goes all the way down to your chest and you don't have any neck hair, man, it's just going to be this floppy sort of, I don't know, man. <laughs> this floppy, wispy thing. It'll come back with a cool towel. That should feel nice and refreshing, man. Get some of this Temple Smoke beard oil. So flipping good. And for your beard, I think I'll do about three drops. A fresh bottle. And then I'm going to work the oil in all the way down to the skin. Because beard oil is more of a skin soother versus our utility bomb is more of a styling product. I got some old school barber dust for you too, man. Dust is a must. Gotta have it, baby. And we want to set this beard into place. So I'm gonna give you this, your new best friend, man. Make the little travel brush. 100% boar bristles. <laughs> Help distribute that oil evenly. <laughs> <laughs> JT, thanks for coming and sharing your experience oh, with us, dude. Oh, Chris, I appreciate it. It was. This Me. was. Uh, I'll be back. <laughs> hey, I'm Mark. I think that Beard Brand products and the Beard Brand mission. They've really helped me kind of wear my beard and present it to the world in a way that, honestly, for the first time in my life, like, kind of makes me feel kind of handsome. You know, sometimes. But anyway, thanks, guys.